Welcome to the lesson on sketching geometric models. In this lesson, we will discuss scales and how to apply scales to understand the difference between an actual object and a scale object. Now, the geometric properties that apply to shapes can be scaled up or down for practicality. Now, practically speaking, we can build an entire complex of buildings and roads and parking lots and parks, but until we build a scale model, we might not have a, any idea of, of how things are laid out what the planes may be, and how things will functionally work within an actual setting. So scale models give us a very realistic setting for all this before we put a lot of time and money into its building. Now you also may recall playing with toy cars. A toy car is the scale of an actual car in the sense that the toy car still looks like a car. The tires are still the same size in relation to the windshield, to the trunk, and to the rest of the actual vehicle. It is a smaller version of an actual car. And they do this with ratios and proportions. Scale models work based on these set ratios between their measurements and the actual object. So you might be thinking of a ratio as A over B, and then a proportion saying that A over B being equal to C over D, where the A and the B and the C and the D are connected between those two objects. So imagine we have a, the big car, the actual car, and one of the measurements over the small version of it being equal to the big version of another measurement over the small version of another measurement. And we'll be able to apply exactly what this means in just a little bit. So our toy car may be 1 16th of the actual car. Our small building might be one third of the size of a different scale model of a building. We might have different proportions that might be 6 19ths of the actual size of something else. Going the other direction, we could have the actual shape of something being double a scale, 500 times a scale, or even 1,000 times the scale model. So let's take a look at some practice, and let's examine two tractors. Now, let's say the farm toy model is generally 1 16th or 1 64th, but let's use 1 16th. The toy is 1 16th, the actual tractor. Now, the toy is 15 inches long and 7 and a quarter inch high. So we're going to think about the dimensions of the full size tractor. So let's set up that the toy is 15 inches long over X, the length of the actual tractor, which we do not know. And that's gonna be equal to 1 16th, one inch being equal, equal to 16 inches on the actual tractor. So when I cross multiply, I get one times X, which is X, and then 15 times 16, which is 240 inches. So we're gonna convert that in just a little bit also. Let's take a look at the height. So 7.25 inches, I converted that seven and a quarter over X equals one over 16. Cross multiplying, I'm gonna get X equals, they're times 7.25 by 16, I'll get 116 inches. So that means in converting it to feet, the length of our actual tractor is going to be 20 feet and the height of our tractor will be 9.6 repeated feet, so about nine feet, eight inches. Let's take a look at another example by looking at a map of the United States. Now most maps have a key or a legend, and of course maps also have a scale. One inch on a map measuring with a ruler is roughly about 500 miles. So let's think of two cities. Let's think of Tallahassee in Florida to the capital of Kansas, Topeka. Now I measure that with a ruler and I get about 2.2 inches. I'm gonna to try to be precise as possible, but I let's say I get 2.2 inches on this particular map. So once again, I set up a proportion, one inch on my map, over 2.2 on my ruler, one inch is 500 miles on the map over X. Hopefully I will find how many miles are between them on the map and then in reality. So one times X will give me X and 500 times 2.2 will give me exactly 1,100 miles. Now, while this might not be exact, it gives us a good approximation by using scales and proportions.